Um, okay, let me bring in Guy Lebas. He is with Jenny Montgomery Scott. He's our Bloomberg Best Economist. His forecast was for 80,000 jobs to be created in June. Guy, give me your give me your take on this. Well, obviously the result is pretty unfriendly, and I'm actually reminded of a line from Mr. Buffett about two years ago, which was to say that by any common sense definition, we're still in a recession. Uh, you know, job growth at this pace is simply not nearly great enough to jumpstart the economy, and particularly the one area that's flagging, which is to say consumer spending. No jobs means no income means no spending growth, and spending is about 70 percent of the U.S. economy. Mm. Are we in danger? I mean, Guy brings up a good point. Are we in danger of another recession, Warren? I don't think so. No, I, I, would, I would bet very heavily against that. Uh, how fast the recovery will come, uh, you know, I, I don't know. But uh, I see nothing that indicates any kind of a double dip. We, ha we have a number of our businesses, uh, a majority of them, that every month are getting better. And, and, and they're hiring. They're not, they're not hiring at huge rates. But, mm -hmm. but if you looked at our 70-some businesses, uh, all but six or seven would be getting better. And, and the six or seven are in? in uh, related it, to construction. Related, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So that, that, that falls into what you've been talking yeah. about. Retailing is not getting better as fast with us as manufacturing-related jobs. I can't tell you the reason for that, but, uh, but that is, that's the case. Guy, would you, I mean, uh, you know, are we looking, though, I mean, in your view, are we looking at a possible double dip here? Well, I think each month that goes by with job creation being negligible and, in fact, net of population growth negative really means a greater probability of such a recession. And I'm not sure it makes a big difference in the long run for the markets or really the economy whether we have several years of stagnant growth, which is what the data are starting to apply, versus having a short recession and a little bit more growth thereafter. I actually want to turn your attention for just a sec to, to one piece of the data that hasn't really been discussed, which is the big decline in government payrolls. Uh, we went from sort of a monthly average decline of about 20,000 to now 40 to 50,000. Mm -hmm. And that's a big factor that's kind of in the background that could get worse as we head into the teacher hiring season in September. What do you think of that, Warren? Well, uh, I mean, I'm not in charge of government payrolls. So <laughs> I see the private payrolls. And, and, and like I say, what we see is modest growth upward and and what we're if you look at the 70 some companies we're having s small growth in in payroll and probably 60 of them we're probably having really aggressive growth in five or six and then we're having total stagnation in the construction related ones what are the CEOs what are your CEOs saying to you? I mean that you know what, what would get them to accelerate hiring? Is it simply demand? demand. Okay, <laughs> I knew they, that. They are not. They are not going to. They are not going to build build anything they don't think they can sell. I mean, it's it's very simple. Now we have a company like Iskar that, that sells small tools that go into great big machine tools, and they sell them in Asia and they sell them in Europe, all worldwide. Mm -hmm. Their business has been very strong. You know, it it. it uh, and people aren't buying those things to, you know, to, to stick on their fireplace or anything. These things go into machine tools. They get used up. Right. So we're, we're, we're see, and we're seeing it in Europe even, I mean, and, and Asia. So we are seeing growth around the world, but we're not, we're, it, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's not mushrooming. You know, a lot of people have looked at, at government, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, about what could the White House do, what could Congress do, right, to create jobs. But, you know, a lot of people looked also at, at Bernanke, at the Fed. And, and what they could do to create jobs. Is there anything that could come out? <laughs> if, if he had, no, he's just, he's just his, his foot has been on the gas pedal to, uh, uh, as far as it'll go. I mean, when, when you get, when you got to have a, a, a trillion and a half of excess reserves sitting around there at a quarter of a percent, and you know, you've bought 60 or 70 percent of the net issuances of governments in the last six months. Right. Uh, Bernanke is, uh, he is, uh, he's done his part. <laughs> did you support what he did though? With the well, I, I, I think, I think that he and other administration officials since the fall of 2008 have, have done an heroic job. Okay, uh, and Guy, just a final thought from you. I mean, what do you think? What does this print in June tell you about the rest about the second half growth? Uh, I think it tells us that second half expectations are wildly optimistic right now. If you take a look at the Federal Reserve's forecast, you're going to have to remember that it'll take more than 3.5% GDP expansion just to meet the low end of those forecasts in the second half. And back to my original point a few minutes ago, without consumer spending growth, which is driven by jobs growth, we simply cannot have that type of consistent expansion. So I think economic forecasts are, in general, far too optimistic for the second half of this year. We're not looking forward to anything great right now.
Mm, okay, wildly optimistic. Uh, Guy, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Bloomberg Best Economist, Guy LeBas.